阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥。陀佛，阿弥陀佛。I'm just going straight into the nitty gritty of it because um we have been in quite deep into the um Tai San Gai Yin Pian. Uh, very good question just now from uh, uh Ying. Um, I think it warrants us to revise the word. What is the most exalted one? You know, and and what the exalted one talks about. Cause and effect.、Uh, when there is a cause, there's an effect. When there's an action, there's a reaction. You can, you you yin. And 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 before we go back to here, these are all the you know list of gan yin of cause and effect of、um, action and reaction, basically cause and effect. And because when we talk about exalted one. As I mentioned in the Facebook,、um, it means the most how to say our true nature, our true self, rather than referring to a person, a people, which is not wrong because Buddha exemplified a true self. But if you want to bring it to a more broader, more principle kind of、um, understanding, that means our true nature. And if we follow our true nature, we need to understand、uh, the principle of cause and effect. And from principle of cause and effect can be best learned by looking at、um, its uses, its application, which is in everyday life. You know what caused the suffering, what caused this happiness. You know what is the merit, what is the path to its merit, what is the path to its、uh, unfortunates,、uh, this、um, towards disasters.、Uh, what is the cause of the merit, what is the cause of the disasters? Basically,、um, that's it. Basically, that that that's the whole. That if you want to simplify everything down to this, but if we use in application, the beauty of it is it's it's getting more nuanced and getting more in depth as you understand、uh, how it works, because it will help you to inform yourself when you make decision or thinking when you talk when you speak when you do in many contexts because you have to deal with many kind of many、uh, kind of a, a different environment. In family, in school, in career, in 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 work,、uh, in temple, in and out, you know, and even in yourself, by yourself, when you're by yourself, what kind of action and thoughts were you thinking, generating, and and what kind of decision do you go with? So it can be very, 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 very fine, as fine as your own thought when you're by yourself, as broad as the whole world implication. Towards the whole world, you know, towards the whole universe.、Um, so it has a spectrum, you know, from the finest spectrum to the macro, huge, humongous, gigantic、uh, scale.、Uh, and none of them escapes the law of cause and effect. So basically, that's what we're doing here. So going back to section three,、uh, if you recall, we have learned about section one, section two.、Uh, one is about what is Tai San Gan Ying. What is Basically explaining the、um, how to say the objective of this book,、uh, the existence, the 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 cost of being of this book. You know why this book comes in、uh, worthy of us to learn in the first place,、uh, because it was given by the exalted one. In if you read it literally, it can be、uh, you know it can straight、uh, literally refer to Tai San Lao Jun. You know like the、um, founder of Taoism, which is a sage. And in Buddhism, he it is a bodhisattva, Buddha and bodhisattva. But we need to go further than that. We can't just stay on the surface. We can respect sages, but we need to respect what what how do we respect them? Is to understand what they're trying to teach us, and what they're trying to teach us is to go back to ourselves, our true nature.、Uh, only then we can unlock the path towards you know、uh, ultimate happiness. And before we even reach the ultimate happiness, currently we need to know what's going on in our life that makes us miserable or causes a lot of trouble to ourselves. 
And if we go deeper into analysis and help by this um, content of the book, this section, you will understand a lot of them is because, you know, a slight slip of thought, uh, 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 giving in to your temptation, giving in to that, um, how to say, what seems insignificant uh, thought that we later understand. It's a greed, it's a lust, it's a it's um, um, anger, it's, it's dislike, and then it turns into uh, hatred, and it turns into you know, even worse and worse and worse. Or a slight thought of kindness, compassion, it comes from small act of you know helping ants, uh, preventing them from drowning, and turns into a marriage that might el- uh, elongate your life further, you know, provides you longevity, something close, something tangible. Only then we expand towards um, you know, next life, pure land, uh, ultimate bliss, this kind of thing. So they'll, they'll, there are scales, there are levels. So over here in Tai Sang, they emphasize a lot on what's currently happening right now. That's why Mao Zedong Kong mentioned this is one of the foundational course because it provides us something we can hold, we can think, something tangible before we go too far, too big. All right, pure land is huge. And, and the concept, the philosophy of it, how do we even get started, right? You can say, Nin Amitofo, go to Pure Land, it's easy. It, in practice, it's just that, but to build up confidence that we are lacking, or in, at, the, at least I can say for myself that I'm still not yet there, not strong enough, the confidence in, 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 in determining to go to Pure Land, we need this foundation course. This way is part of it, and this is also part of it. So going back to here, right now we understand that now what is tangible. So we look at the action. What is considered as in in a Buddhist term is called unwholesome deeds, something that creates negative karma. So we have so far gone through four parts of it. There are plenty to go on, but today all we care about is part five: transition, transgression of the deceitful. Okay, and why do I say deceitful? I translate this from Chinese because these kind of deeds are uh, in Chinese term rou ruo. Uh, they classify as rou ruo. Rou ruo means in the very literal way, it means soft and weak, as in it, it's not transgression. But put it in this context, it means deceitful. That means you're hiding it, the Buddha knows. Only you and the Buddha knows or people who are involved in that knows. It was well wrapped under the surface. No one, most people will know. For example, the kind of envy, the kind of, um, as you can see, illustrated by this clause, the kind of, um, you know, it arises from jealousy, that kind of unwholesome thinking, and it, and it allowed be, and allowing to fester into something um, even worse, uh, you know, and. This clause is exemplifying it. You know why is it deceitful? All right. So go into it. We we can read it, and you can say that desiring others to fail and be at fault, preventing others from carrying out good deeds or projects for the public benefit. I mean, that's not really nice, isn't it? Like, shouldn't we be like congratulating people when someone else is very successful and able to contribute a bit more to the unit and and by right, if we can think like that, obviously this is not a problem. But sometimes jealousy takes over because we don't understand cause and effect. That's one big reason why we need to learn cause and effect. Everyone has their own uh, amount, certain amount of merits they bring forward. You know, this is a very crucial concept because in this world, from what we can see, what we can observe, it's not fair. If we just look at that, you know, literally, it's not fair. Someone else is born with, you know, a net worth of one million, one billion. Even though their family may bankrupt, they might end up still with a, a couple of millions of dollars. They're still doing very well, even though they make mistakes in corporate or anything. Some people, they born and live less than ten days and they die, starve, right? So this, this if we put it in, in day-to-day, some people just join the team for one or two years, but immediately they got promoted, go up. 
all right uh maybe maybe someone uh someone else might be uh how to say talented then maybe we, we, we might understand but even the talent itself right like why is someone people born here with this talent they have like in music in business in math in art stuff like that and why some of us uh some people were mediocre or they can't access that part of themselves it's because of cause and effect things they did in the past they did more than you hence they reap what they sow understanding that you your heart immediately returns back to tranquility so this is what happened when we do not in understand cause and effect and do not understand the principle of it hence giving rise to that kind of jealousy and this is one form of it um also to preventing others from carrying out good deeds or projects for public benefit it can be um seen from two uh two ways one of them is defaming them say this person is a good person maybe he say something more direct and then people twisting these words into something that is not uh, that's defamation and the other one is literally stopping them from achieving the objective um, one of the historical you know in Chinese history is very famous is the UFA he's trying to re restore his countries back to the former territory He's lost, he lost the north half of this country and um, he's almost there, you know, pushing back the Mongolian forces. That was during that famous Mongolian Empire period. Um, while the rest of the world was conquered, that, that part of the country is the one that is almost uh, like able to hold out while the rest of the world has been conquered by Mongols. And he's one of the main key generals that are able to hold back the offensive just because of his sheer commitment and of course he has tactical brilliance. Um, without going too technical, basically he has the ability to hold at least a bit of territory for his country. So this is, this is his career and his loyalty. But it was end up being backstabbed by one of the you know, famous villains in Chinese history. Um, something uh, amounting to you know, Judas in biblical sense so he's basically Qing Kui, and he's the one that you know backstabbing him by forcing him to come back from the front line when he was in the middle of campaign in the middle of achieving a certain momentum to reclaim at least a portion of the land and that will provide a breeding space for the country and the people to survive and rebuild but it was robbed of their opportunities because of politics and why do we use um, what does the umbrella term politic means? I'm not going into that. But underneath all that terms is selfishness, is jealousy, is you know just thinking about yourself, just thinking about your power, your positions, thinking about your own benefit, your own skin, saving your own skin at the expense of many many people. Basically, that's the underlying intention. He's trying to draw him back because. Um, if I, without going too deep into it, when he success, he might be able to reclaim back the former territory, the nobles and the emperor that held captive at the north will be bring back to the capital. That touches, tickles the emperor's power because of his own brother who was held captive, going back to the imperial court. Okay, without going too far. All right, that's the interesting part, I know. Point is, um, balancing, like, you know, allowing selfish consideration overriding you know what is important for the bigger chest bigger taji bigger um mission will always end up in terrible loss all right in that case back in song that song dynasty um the result is they lost the momentum it was pushed back by mongolians ultimately going all the way down as far down to vietnam even at the border of vietnam the, the whole Guangdong is lost and all that and a lot of people the nobles or just normal folks uh, the Han the, the people they all have to jump from the cliff it's a very famous famous term you know everyone has to um, desperate so desperate they have to commit suicide over the um, jumping on the cliff rather than submitting themselves to the Mongolian rules or just because it was chaotic, everyone's killing, you know, the army's killing ferociously. Basically, what I'm trying to say is this is, you know, good deeds, you know, in Chinese, it's just like destroying people's success. 
success can mean a lot of things in in terms of people who are actually talented and put in the right place they can build such a wonderful thing or like in terms of military campaign they can create a breeding space for the people and destroying that just because of your own political or your own selfish um uh, thoughts it's uh, uh consideration is just um one of the worst thing you could do to yourself and others because in the end there will be karma and we have to pay for it all debts must be paid so yeah echoing what master ching kong's uh, mentioned in chinese is um he also at another layer which i love he say that can you actually stop people from achieving success those people who are meant to achieve success those people who have that momentum you can't you can't you can't right so i'm using two accents um you can't because you know if they are meant to have success that means they have enough merits to override whatever obstacle you put in front if you can be you know like stop maybe your success might be stop halfway or something maybe the the merit is not enough one of the factors all right so what you can do so far is maybe delaying his success for five years or ten years all right say that guy might get promotion tomorrow and because of his talent and all that and then say someone jealous and trying to um you know give gossips and stuff like that it will it will it will confuse the ranks and confuse the higher ups but in the end of the day you will be clear out right and 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 they might return back to the right place all right um basically what it means is that there's no there's no benefit for one to do that um it's just very harmful to yourself uh, to, to people who perpetrate it you know people who commit this because um helping people to complete something noble something nice something good you know even as little as um you know some um charities or you know helping them to finish the task that will help the team and stuff like that sorry i can't conjure any um examples you guys can share a bit uh, when i finished uh, i was just gonna go to two classes today um you know helping them means you also got the merits if you're obstructing people you know right in the end of the day what you would do is you will be obstructed in future as well the karma of obstructing others is being obstructed um and no one wants to be obstructed uh, you know everyone wants to be uh, have a smooth sailing and at least have assistance when in time of needs so thinking about that it automatically helps you to think i need to help this person you know like if we can't be 100 percent selfless at the very least think about you know if you help other people you never know one day you know in the your very you know in your in a time of needs they will be helping you or people that you matters people that you care about but you can't reach them so they might help your family stuff like that those things um, might not be transactional when you do that even better um, but by nature it is like that it, nothing nothing happens coincidentally everything has a has a cost before it can become a thing an effect right it's just the conditions all right so all we do by stopping people achieving their success is delaying the conditions or dragging it out right and what what good come out of that this is a rational brain thinking right most of the time when this happens it either can be rationally or it can be too like emotional um letting that overriding you know what is reasonable and because of that one moment of impulse then we might lose the opportunity to accumulate merits instead we created a lot of obstacle for ourselves in future so don't do that all right even a word something we don't know about other people right and and we talk about them analyzing them stuff like that um try to avoid it i mean unless it's actually for for your job or you know it's it's a task to recruit people or it's a task to entrust something important to uh, that people that you need to know do they have that temperament character skills uh besides that try to avoid those i mean try to avoid those um gossiping tendency right it's it's you never know you might create a ripple effect you might create some unintentional uh, gossips or impression on other people that's that's just not helping you 
So what you do not want, don't give it to others. All right, Confucius say, 己所不欲，勿施于人。What you wish not happen to yourself, do not wish it upon others. Do not impose it upon others. Simple theory, but we surprise like at the time, at that context, at that moment, we might lost that sense of you know composure, my、uh, giving in to this、um, this negative,、uh, this unwholesome side habit we have. So always guard against it. Be, you know, just guard against it. How do we guard against it? Always give rise to the thought of wishing people success. Sometimes you might you might have that feeling of I've been working at this so many years, and that person just came in and pop up. You never know what kind of background experience they have. They might even be more capable. But have you seen how they work? Even if that person might not uh, uh might not be capable now, or maybe they rely on connections and stuff like that. That's his own merit. He is reaping his own merit in the past. Using the understanding, you will not put your attention on other people. Instead, you will only think about: Have I get better than what I was before? Have I improved today compared to what I was three weeks ago? That's a much better thing because you can measure it. You can control it. Right? You can't control what happens outside your 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 range. Like promotions or getting wealth or getting you know a good relationship stuff like that you can't control that.、Uh, the thing is already like rolling. What you can do is redirect your direction, redirect your attention. Okay. So opposite of this is merit. You know, always wishing people、uh, not to fail. Always save them from committing faults. You know, if you have closer relationship with them, tell them what's wrong, what's going on. Something might not be right the way they say, the way they do. And if they appreciate it, accept it, help them, make them successful. Their merit when they achieve their successful because you help them is equal to the merit that you have. Not lesser, not five percent, not ten percent. That's worldly thinking. In Buddhism, the the, the one that taps into truth. The merits of people who support someone who success is equal. So Master Ching Kong is giving a speech in front of thousands of millions of people. He has helps countless of people. He's a symbol. He's a flag, as much as he's a teacher. But at the same time, thousands of people behind him, supporting him throughout the years, right? Supporting him, giving him the 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 resources, the place. The the even t- his teacher, which is the knowledge, the wisdom, the training he needs, even the condition he needs, those people have equal merits as Master Ching Kong. As based on what he said, 护法跟弘法的功德是平等 Right? Even you cooking a dish. Okay, what I'm trying to say in Chinese means the one who protects the Dharma. That means supporting group. And the one that propagates the dharma, which is basically on stage performers, people who go on stage like Venerable Cheng De, Venerable Xue Wu, and those people who support him, like Uncle James, Uncle Cynthia, who you know、uh, coordinate, and everyone, every department in in that temple in that moment who support him to complete this task has equal merits as the person who do the、um, speech or expressing it out. And I, I I like Master Ching Kong's another analogy. It's like clock. You look at two stuff: the hour finger, the hour hand, and the minute hand. Yeah, short, long hand and short hand. Sorry, very bad English. And and that's all it matters, right? In the clock, you just want to see that. What time is it? But in order for this to to work, it needs every single cog inside. You know the. C O G the clock inside the、um, clock to work, l- l- missing one、um, screw and cog will cause the clock not to function. Hence, losing its purpose. So very important. Even you're just washing the dishes, all right. Even you're just moving tables,、uh, r- arranging tables for people to have a good time sitting here listening to Dharma. That is equal as Venerable Chanda speaking on stage. Obviously, like anything else in performance, there are main character, there are side characters, right? 
sorry guys, I dip a little bit too much into what I've been studying. Main character on on the show, you still need to like put more focus on them. That's the whole point. That's layered, the feelings of layered. And then the side character will support. Sometimes side character might be the main character. The main character will be a side character. And this is how Buddhas work, by the way, if you guys like know what happens behind the scene. When Shaim Buddha comes into the scene, I divert a little bit too far, but this is still related to the point. Bear with me. All right, when Shaim Buddha comes into the scene 2,500 years ago or 3,000 years ago, doesn't matter. All right, somewhere in the past, he was the main character. What about the side character? How many side characters are there? Thousands. Or the kings, right? And the and the and the and and his students, top ten disciples. Some people even ask some questions that came out of nowhere. That is so brilliant. Who do you think they are? Who can ask them? They are Buddhas. Behind the scene, guys, they just they just appear on stage as his students. In fact, they are equal. They can be the same Buddhas, but one appears as Buddha, one appears as students to bring out the rest of us, inspire the rest of us. That's the beauty of it in Buddhism. There's no jealousy if we understand this depth of the teaching. It's, there's a need to go in deep because of this. That's why we chant, may I go in depth into the Dharma every moment. As I take the refuge into the Dharma, Buddha Dharma. I may I I vow may I uh, may all sentient beings deepens their understanding of the Buddha Dharma, so that their wisdom is as vast as the ocean. There you go. That's beauty part, beauty of it. When you apply in your daily life, then nothing is nothing is unfair. Nothing is bad. If you really 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 identify and synchronize with the understanding. It's, everything is beautiful. Hence, it becomes, you know, when you see someone at the risk of making a mistake, you immediately want to save them, help them, preventing them from losing the merit by fixing the faults or not fixing, by helping them, advising them, all right, inspire them towards the right path, towards the proper path. All right. When you see someone at the verge of success, give them a little push and they soar and they fly on the skies. All right. People might see only that soaring and flying, but that launch pad moment, that every single moment that leads him to that moment, all right, everyone is has equal merits. Same thing. Yeah. Okay. So now I'm I'm what I'm doing here is laying out the benefit of it, the vastness of it, the vastness of merit. Hence it becomes illogical, idiotic to commit otherwise. Well, I say in a very harsh way because I'm trying to tell myself there's no, there's no reason, there's no benefit, like no matter how selfish you are, there's no benefit for you to do this. But even in purely selfish perspective, in the worst of the worst kind of thinking, calculative way of thinking, which is not what we're trying to encourage here, but it happens, right? Sometimes I am calculative, sometimes we might be calculative. And this is still a very bonus point to do against, I mean, to do, to help other people too be successful all right so i'm going for the lowest and lowest and to the highest of the highest all right. okay second one to cause dangerous conditions and to neglect others personal safety despite having a duty to ensure it mm. to reduce another's benefit for of fair share in order to bolster one's own wealth and profit so first one talks about safeties talks about talks about security you know everyone needs wants to live everyone wants to have um mentally they want to have a safe space they also want to have a safe environment all right if we endanger them physically and you know like um causing them to feel unsecure causing them to um feel scared fear you know in like basically using fear as a mean to bolster your own standing or your own security in terms of power dynamics or whatever all right it's another transgression deceitful transgression all right and and the second one is more on the you know the 
profits, the, the benefits, how you share the benefits. You try to take more from other people. You give less to others. All right. This one is also uh, not good. All right. And this is the second one is a bit more uh, easier to say because it's it's very common, especially in commerce, in, 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 in making doing business. If you see so those people who actually knows how to do business, I know there are examples of people who might not be a good example and they're still wealthy, but always think about that. They have a lot of merit in the past. All right. What what matters is what happens after, you know, what happens from that point? Because they're already enjoying their past profits, benefits, merits. And question is, will it stay at the same level or will it dwindle? Will it get lesser? Will it get worse as you spend it? Or is that a way to keep replenishing the merits? Right? Those those are the things we need to think about. Even though you're enjoying the benefits, you know, have a good relationships, have a good wealth, have a good secure home, career, um, everything, you know, respected, reputable, all right? But will that last? All right? Uh, will, that, will that go on forever? If that will be go on forever, that means that your karma is consistent. You consistently creating good cause, non-stop, and your cause is getting more. As you understand from their fun, your heart is getting purer. That means every single deeds you actually hundred percent. You're not mixing in thirty percent self calculating benefit, seventy percent benefiting others. You're hundred percent like that. Only then you can get better and better and better. This is how people improve. Their wealth, their standing, their position, their reputations, their their um, cultivation level as well. All right, those things are all tied up. So in this case, this is a situation again, not understanding that, thinking that hey man, if I cut, you know, if I take a bigger cut from your profit, and you know, I'm gonna get my wealth, you're going to get your wealth. Yes. For how long? Wait. My whole life, I don't care. Well, you don't believe in cause and effect doesn't mean it won't happen. You don't believe in gravity doesn't mean it, the gravity won't happen on you. You don't believe in the earth is round doesn't mean the earth becomes flat. Right. Another thing is, what about your next generation? You love your son, right? You love your daughter, right? You love your grandchildren, right? Especially grandchildren. It's always skip a generation. The love is getting stronger. So you want them to have a good, secure place, secure home, secure inheritance. To be honest, don't. More likely, will cause the rift. <clears throat> Leave some wisdom back to them. Um, but back to the point. Um, this act of reducing other people's profit is precisely why it could not last for another two, three generations. It's a famous Chinese saying: "Fu bu The wealth cannot pass down over three generations. Because they have no generosity in the family. Right? The generosity in the past caused the wealth in the present. And the lack of generosity in the present will dwindle your wealth. And because it's dry, there's nothing to fill in to the bucket. Obviously, the wealth will dwindle. Condition will get worsened, as in the life, quality of life. All right. So always have a principle of if you can take 10, take 8. If you can take seven, take five. If you take three, take one. If you have nothing, have nothing. It's, it's counterintuitive, and but this is how it works. All right. I, I can't find a good example. All I can find is um, for, for the contemporaries. But yes, um, there is a wealthy person called Li Jiachen, but I, he, no, he's a human flaws and merits we talk about his merits the way he do business and people like to do business with him with him is because every time he can take 10 percent, he always leave the extra one percent to other people or one or two percent so every time people's like just purely on his business skill right it's his way of dealing with people in business is every time i deal with him he will always leave a little bit room for me to get my share a little bit more than him so everyone flocks to him naturally because you want to do business with people who are willing to share, right? We're not like 
hogging everything to themselves, become a goblin. So yeah, basically you cannot get any benefit by reducing other people's benefit. What you can get is just, um, what you can get, per Liao Fan mentioned, is your past life. Your past life have accumulate $100. Now you're trying to, you know, reap other people's $100. The fact that you can get it is because your past has it. And how long you can hold it depends on the discounted amount after you did this transgression. Like say you can only hold it for two two years. Now you can only hold it for two days because of your uh, terrible uh, state of mind. That that kind of they kind of thought is terrible. So who got the benefit? No one. Yeah. Okay. So pretty much that's um that's a direct you know explanation. Anyone else have anything else to say? Uh, or just anything to share uh, based on today's uh, sessions? Sorry, I'm still reading the, the Chinese, the, the Master Ching Kong's version as well. Remember why they say deceitful? Why they say the transgression of the deceitful because it's not obvious it's very subtle and it's very very subtle you can't you can't how to say you can't just point out at someone else and say yo you, you like this only you know only the buddhas know only the enlightened knows but most important only you know like if you're not aware of it only people close to you might be able to see it you know and don't wait until that time. Like, diagnose it yourself. Um, trying to get out of it yourself. Um, that's why Dharma is important because of this. It stops you from creating your own de demise. It give and a positive way of saying it is it opens up the path of infinite merit to you, infinite possibilities to you, so that you don't get trapped into one condition. Um, because as your wisdom grows, as your ability to hold back, which is based on Ding Gong, right? Hold back your temperament. And that ability to hold back your temperament, your jealousy, your hatred, your um, greed, your lust, and stuff like that, is based on your ability to uh, prevent yourself uh, from engaging into that, into that thought or engaging into the crowd, that only thing like that, or preventing yourself from touching the conditions that will lead you astray. Mm. Um, and then jetting hui basically. Precepts, meditative tranquility and wisdom. Alright? And all these things trying to tell you is it's in your heart. Hands back to the first sentence, the most exalted one. Once you tap into that most precious part of yourself, right? That's why we all say it's the most exalted one. Why is it deserving that word? Because because this one is the source of everything, including the bad and good. It does not create a bad and good, but it is um, giving rise to that. Um, I'm not going too technical, but there's a school of Buddhism called Consciousness on the Wei Si Lun, and it helps a lot, especially in Master Ching Kong's talk. He used a lot of these um, tools to explain because it's very the way they do it is very scientific. They they break it down. Basically, it's a study of the mind, but you know, and it was championed by my radio. Buddha, which is Mila Pusa, Bodhisattva Maitreya, Maitreya. And, and Buddha asked him, how many thoughts we have in one moment? And, um, and Bodhisattva Maitreya say, one flick of finger, I think people who heard Master Ching Kong's speech, he will repeat that all the time. It's very important, that's why. One flick of finger has 32,000年, which is gazillions and gazillions of thoughts, all right? The refresh rate of our computer, maybe thousands or maybe hundreds per second. That means one second, there are how many frames of picture pass through, creating an illusion of Dylan speaking in front of you. As in, I'm, I'm talking, if there's a lot of picture, flipping through your eyes, giving you the illusion I'm moving. Same goes to our realities. Now Buddha say in one thought, I mean, how many thoughts pass through in this one second, one moment? 
uh, it's a one one second or one moment uh, because we, we we calculate. But basically, what it means one second, there are gazillions of thoughts passing through. So your reality, if you recall what Venerable Chengde mentioned back in um, the whole school hall to our youth group, you know we are in the dreams of dreams. So once you woke up from your own nightmare or your sweet dreams, you woke up from the dreams of dreams. Now you're still in dreams, all right? And this dream has thousands, gazillions of thoughts passing by in one second. So when you can, you have deep tranquility, a meditative tranquility, you're able to stop your thoughts frame by frame. That's the reality Bodhisattva Maitreya and all the Bodhisattva of his level can see, can see, as in I'm seeing you, you're seeing me. That's a level of reality they can see without a device, without using equipment, right? So what I'm trying to get at is, um, even you go towards the path of science or path of philosophy or anything, ultimately you will have to converge back to this. How it works is cause and effect. You know, one frame, one frame by one frame. One frame planted the seeds. The second frame also planted the seeds. Think of why we chant Amitabha is because we're planting a lot of seeds just by the power of quantity. We're throwing the seeds as much as we can in every second so that our thought has a lot higher proportion of Amitabha in it. A less proportion of this jealousy, selfishness in it that cause, you know, second next frame, which is the unwholesomeness. Sorry, I get very excited because I like to think that way. And and this kiss kisses my thought expert perfectly. As every time Venerable mentioned about this, I always imagine myself like being able to stop at that moment. Obviously, when I'm still imagining, I, I'm not using the ability. Just telling us how vast, how deep it is, the Dharma, and how relevant it is to us right now. If we if we just change your thought. You're changing gazillions of your real, of your fl- of your frame, right? Another thing I really don't want people who uh, can't access the Chinese part of his speech is to miss is he always mentioned this is actually from the from the consciousness only uh, sutra uh, when Buddha asked Buddha Bodhisattva Maitreya he explained in a very technical terms. So what he meant is our reality is xiang si xiang xu. Xiang. The, in, the illusion that we're in is illusion of me moving as if I'm actually moving. But what happened is think of pictures. One picture is one frame, one reality. And thousands of pictures crammed together and, f- and, and moving at once give you that illusion that it is permanent continuity. But it was, it was formed by very each individual unit, each individual pictures. They're just moving at a very quick speed. Hence, we thought it's real. Thinking on cause and effect, this is how it works. Cause and effect happens because we keep repeating this pattern of movements. Thousands of frames passing by, we still engage in it because we can't, we can't settle down enough to see the reality as the Buddha and Bodhisattva did. So we just attach to the form. So we, we're still doing what we think or used to do. Or, you know, uh, angry, angry, sad, sad. Um, uh, when people cry, you cry. Uh, all this, what I'm trying to say is, you're still getting very heavily, heavily affected, very passive, unable to gain initiative of your realities. Uh, you're just being pulled, like a cow being pulled by the nose unable to control yourself. That's the pain of it. That what's, that's what prompts Bodhisattva Avalokitesvara, Guan Yin, to help. One of the most important thing is to help us getting out of this cycle. What we call it cycle of birth and death. What does it mean? That means you keep repeating that reality again, creating cause and effect. Cause and effect, one fa jie kong yin fo bu gong, right? Everything is empty. I'm just going to sum up with this big Meta metaphysical stuff, but um, there's 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 a merit in learning this because we have scientific mind. We have a more scientific mind than our predecessors in our condition. This is quite right for us, I think. Um, you know, cause and effect, right? 
if you just break them down, break them up without saying their in their interaction, the energy of moving, they're actually illusory because you know they don't they are not there. You know they 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 are born out of booming ignorance, which is nothing. They will go back to nothing. Right? This nothing is not that nothing. It's 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 the it's the exalted one. It came from our most exalted one, our true nature. But we are lost, and we give rise to thought. The moment of you giving rise to thought is the moment of you losing yourself. Right? The true self do not need to think. Do not need to pause a moment to reflect. The, the, this is just a tool to save us from, you know, going too far. But this tool you need to be forsake when you get into that level. But what what, what I'm trying to say right now is, um, the the conversion of cause to effect and the conversion from effect to cause is what creating this. How to say this? Thing that happening right now, which is why is it keep going? You know, even though you die, even though you stop, you know, your body no longer uh, decomposed or you move on to next uh, existence. Why do you still come back again and repeat the same thing or getting worse or getting better, depending on your merits, cause and merits, right? Because this this conversion never stops, and we can't stop it just like think just by thinking about it. We need to do our homework. Deep meditative tranquility, tingong, right? And to have that, we need to actually practice precepts. That's why precepts look simple, but if you properly practice it and understand it with wisdom, and like it will open up you to that path. And it's a long road. It takes many generations, many many cycles of rebirth to get through this. Um, hence, that is why we have Amitofo, which gives us cutting it short from many, many cycles of live, uh, rebirth into one. Because instead of instead of having you figure out by yourself, oh, okay, I will stop this reality. They're just like, it's fine. If you can't stop this, if you can't detect, if, you're, if your faculty, your own faculty cannot stop the frame at that moment, you don't have the ability. Just throw every... Just replace every single frame with Amitofo. God, that's genius. Because everything becomes Amitofo. You know what you know what it means? Instead of having had the mercy of your thought thinking about I like this person, I don't like this person, uh, I, I hate this, I love this, uh, I don't feel anything, I feel bored, I feel happy, you know, all these thousands of thoughts. Everything condensed into one Amitofo. So in your thoughts, one second. If you keep continuing chanting Amitofo, every frame is Amitofo. Amitofo. You have no other place to go than pure land. Now, knowing this depth, then you appreciate what Amitofo is doing. And that's why Master Chinko wants to talk about these 60 years or what he showed us, going through all these big dhammas to let us understand how sophisticated Buddha Dharma is. And then going through this pure land to try to telling us Sophistication does not mean complexity, complex. It is complex, the, the technical part of it, but in, 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 in the highest, utmost form of sophistication, it's very simple, easy to understand, yet it's very profound. Uh, that's why I'm having this, what, well, that's why I also want to have that Buddha story to tell us that sophistication does not have to be complex. It can be done every day. And it makes us appreciate these four words every time we think about it. We think about, oh, when I chant Amitabha 4, I'm throwing gazillions of Amitabha's frame in my brain, replacing gazillions of, one of love, hate, uh, all sorts of emotion, all sorts of wandering thoughts. Hence, increasing my chance to get out of this cycle. Hence, increasing, redu uh, uh, reducing, how would I say, my likeness, likeness to, to go back into the suffering, like falling into the trap of thinking you can harm other people to secure yourself. That is an illusion. That is a foolish illusion. However, people who does not know any better or who does not have not heard of the Dharma or have not heard of any good teachings or have not get in depth of the good teachings, allowing their own 
be, uh, um, ignorance, the habit to override their better nature. Yeah. So there's only sad sadness when you look at people who commit or you look at yourself committing unwholesome deeds. Because sad, because especially for us, we already have a bit of idea of it. We still feel like, why am I still here? Like, how does it, why am I still giving rise to that thought, right? Obviously, give yourself time, but we also need to have that sense of urgency. We already know this. We already have access to this information. Why are we not practicing it? You know? And and gives you this gives you an idea. This momentum is too strong. You can't hold back just thinking about it. You actually need to build up the muscle to go against it. It's like you go to gym to build up muscle so that you can do rock climbing quicker. Or or like, you know, Alex, she's working hard to build up her knowledge and understanding and experience to be an experienced tutor, experienced teacher. One day she can have her own career. Same goes with Buddhism. You need to build up that muscle so deep that every time you have that wandering thought, you can change it to Amitofo because you can immediately swap your realities around. So I hope this gives us a bit of um, insight into this um, cause and effect, how it works and how, it, how we actually can operate. Uh, from this point onwards. Thank you so much. <laughs> uh, all right, guys. Um, if we have nothing else to say, we can dedicate the merits and call it a day. Yeah. Silence is golden. All right. Thank you, guys. Ah, me, to, for. Ah, me, to, for. Ah, me. To for a me 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 to for May the merits and virtues adorn the Buddha's pure land, uh, repay the four kinds of kindness above, and relieve the sufferings of those in the three paths below. May those who see and hear of this all bring forth the heart of understanding and compassion, and leave the teaching for the rest of this life. Then be born together in the land of ultimate bliss. Ami Tofo. Thank you, everyone. Have a good night. Thank See you, you next Dylan. week.